Hey, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini, and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make a super cute and functional cord keeper using some basic supplies and elastic. All right, so this roll-up cord keeper project is day seven of my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts. So if you've been following along with the series and you've enjoyed it and you like what you see, go ahead and give the videos a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video tutorial and that at the end of it, you too will click the subscribe button. Now let's go over the supplies we'll need so we can jump right into making our project. You'll need to cut two pieces of fabric, one for the exterior, the other for the lining. Cut to 9.5 by 15 inches. A piece of foam stabilizer cut slightly larger than the exterior fabric dimensions. Some woven fusible interfacing cut to the same dimensions as the lining fabric and fused to it. I'll also be using some temporary spray adhesive. And for the interior partitions, as well as the closure, we'll be using some elastic. In my case, fold over elastic, but whatever elastic you have on hand should work fine. And then the basics, things to mark, measure, cut your fabrics with, a working sewing machine, an iron, and an ironing board. For the first step, I like to take the exterior fabric and place it over my foam interfacing, smooth it out, and you can use some temporary spray adhesive to help it stick together better, and then I like to trim around it, leaving a little bit of space. Now at the sewing machine, we're going to baste around all four sides, about an eighth of an inch in from the outer edge. I lengthen my stitch length to about a 3, 3.5, and then I just stitch it down to make sure this is nice and stuck on to that foam. If you're using fusible fleece or a, a, a fusible foam stabilizer, just go ahead and fuse it with your iron. Also, if you'd like to go for a quilted look on the exterior of your cord keeper here, this would be the time to do it. You can do free motion quilting, straight lines, or even diagonal cross hatching lines. Whatever you want to do is fine. I'm going to leave it like this to save a little bit of time, but either way will work. After it's basted, I then go back in and trim the foam stabilizer flush with the fabric edges. And this is to prevent it from moving on you. Sometimes as you're basting it down, it tends to stretch out. And if you cut the foam stabilizer to the exact size of the fabric, you may end up short on some sides. Set the exterior side, grab your lining fabric and your woven fusible interfacing, and we'll place the interfacing with the scratchier side face up. That's the side that has a tiny little dots of the fusible. Then you're going to place the ugly side of the fabric onto that so that the adhesive side is going to fuse to it. Place it on top and cut around it close to the outer edge of your fabric and then fuse with your iron. Next grab your fold over elastic and this is what I'll be using. This one measures 5 eighths of an inch wide but they also come in some other sizes. If you don't have fold over elastic you can also get away with just a regular braided elastic. And that's what I have here. This is half of an inch wide braided elastic that you can get at any fabric or craft store. But the fold over elastic comes in so many fun colors and prints. We use this stuff for everything. Anyways, you'll need about a yard and a quarter of this. And we're going to cut uh, three different cuts. So grab your lining piece because you need to cut two that measure the same length across, which is 15 inches. So we'll just eyeball it like that. There's one another one, and then you need a little bit for your closure. I would suggest cutting it to about eight inches in length. If you know you're gonna put a lot of bulkier stuff in there, maybe bump it up an inch, but this is gonna be good because remember, it might look small, but it definitely stretches, and you want it to go around your entire roll and keep everything securely in place. So we have our three pieces of fold over elastic. Now let's grab a ruler and something to mark our lining with. On our lining fabric, we're going to mark a line all the way across two and a half inches up from this bottom edge and then two and a half inches down from this top edge. Then take the two long pieces of fold over elastic and place them on the inside of this line, meaning the fold over elastic should be close together on the centers. So on the top line, I'm going to use that as a top edge and place this underneath the line. And for this line, I'm going to place it 
over it so that the line is on the bottom edge. Does that make sense? If you have too much space in between here, some of your shorter cords may not reach all the way across. So keep that in mind as well. Now, some of the elastics will want to curve and kind of move on you a little bit. You don't really want to stretch them too much, but I do want to stretch them enough so that I line it up with the line here. I'll place a couple of pins and then we'll head to the sewing machine to base them just at the short ends right here to the lining fabric. The stitching I did was really close, about an eighth or one sixteenth of an inch in from the outer edges so it gets caught in the seam allowance when we put the rest of it together. Trim away any excess that's sticking out. And then now grab the exterior panel and then place the lining on top of it with pretty sides touching. And we need to go ahead and insert the closure. So if you're working with a fold over elastic that's not just a solid color, or maybe it has like polka dots or a print or whatever it is, whatever you want to be exposed on the outside like this, needs to be actually the loop needs to be folded so that it's wrong sides out because once it gets wrapped around then it's going to show does that make sense so decide whatever side you want and fold it in half with pretty sides touching so i'm going to place it like this and then you can measure or you can just eyeball it about halfway down will be fine place it there put a clip now we're going to flip this back onto it, match up all the raw edges, and place clips all the way around. Now I'll head over to the sewing machine. Using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch all the way around, leaving an opening on one end of about four or five inches. If you're using the foam, it's a little bulkier to flip it out, so leave yourself a little bit bigger of a hole. I'll start on one end, back stitch to secure it, and then go around pivoting on all my corners and stopping at my other mark. So I leave this space right here unstitched. Now we clip corners to reduce bulk. Now reach into the opening and turn everything right side out. give it a good press so grab your ironing board and I will let you know this do not hit the fold over elastic or any other type of synthetic textile with a hot iron because you're gonna melt it and totally mess it up so what I do is if I'm gonna press from here I flip this guy to the back so it's out of my way and then tuck the closure in just somewhere back there because really I want to press this fabric so that I have the seam between the lining and the exterior running nicely along the sides and that way none of the fold over elastic is in my way so I know I'm not going to hit it by mistake. Here you're going to turn the lining side under by your same seam allowance, about a quarter of an inch. So I usually tuck it under and then just give it a quick crease with my nail. And then with the tip of the iron, the foam is a little bulkier to turn under, but I find that if you do it a little at a time, just grab it with your fingertips and then put some clips and that'll hold nicely for when you go to sew it. Now when you press from the other side, just bring the fold over elastic to the lining side and flip it this way, tuck this away again so the fold over elastic is not in your way and then just press it from this side. Now let's top stitch all four sides of it and staying close to the outer edge about an eighth of an inch in, making sure to catch this opening so we seal it up.
after top stitching, grab a ruler and something to mark with. And now we're going to go in and mark in the different sections that are going to section off the entire little cord keeper here. Now, this is totally up to you. If you're making it for yourself and you know the spacing you want, go ahead and do that. I'm going to give you a variety of measurements here from left to right. And we're just going to measure all the way across. And that way you can see it gives you a good variety of sizes. These are narrower ones that are measured at one inch apart. We have some wider ones at two inch, one and a quarter, one and a half. So a good variety, especially coming in handy if you're going to give it as a gift and you're not really sure what all uh, the recipient may use it for. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to measure starting from left to right. OK, I'm going to go one inch over from the edge. So I put the one inch mark on my ruler right along the edge. And notice I'm lining up my fold over elastic on the lines that I drew still. So the top edge should be right underneath that. And this one should be right above it because you don't want your lines to be mismatched like one over here and then one over here. And that's supposed to be the whole column to insert the cord. So keep everything nice and flat and lined up and then one inch over. And mark it on the elastic. You probably can't see that. Let me try it with another chalk marker real quick. And then so we came one inch over. Then we're going to do two inches over from the last line. So you got to make sure you make a mark that you can see. So I see my line on the two, one, two inches over. And then I'll make the next mark. Then we're measuring off of this line. So you got to be accurate with each one. One and a quarter over from that one. So here's one and a quarter. Then two inches over from that last line. Then one inch from that one. Then one inch over from that one. So those are two narrower ones in the middle. Then one and a half. Then another one and a half. From that line, so I'm measuring from here to here. Then a one inch as my last one. And then from that line to the end, whatever that is. So that ends up being uh, just about one and, um, and three quarters. So you got a big one, a big one, a big one here, two good sized ones, and a couple little ones scattered throughout. Now we'll head over to the sewing machine and making sure again that the fold over elastic is still lined up with your lines so you know that it's straight and you don't end up stitching it down like this, okay? You're going to stitch and back stitch on each one of these. And I just do one and just go across and then come and do the other one. So I'll just go forward back stitch and then cut my thread. Forward back stitch and cut my thread. And so this is probably the part that takes the longest, but it's really nothing because you have to partition these off. So let's head over to sew. Now we just clean it up with all the little thread tails that are there. And you may be wondering why I waited until the last step to make those partitions. And the reason for that is that where we pull these to slip things in is going to get the most wear and tear here. So if I stitch the fold over elastic and the partitions to just the lining fabric and the lining fabric is not really attached to the exterior, it's just going to pull the lining away with it like like that, like with the fold over elastic there. So I like to do it through the foam. That way these stitches are a little bit more stabilized and you can really pull on these to fit whatever you need to under there without the whole thing pulling up on you. So if you're concerned about that, just use a thread that matches the exterior fabric or one that blends in. Now, for those of you wondering about the version that I made here with cork fabric as the exterior, 
I did not use the foam stabilizer or any other stabilizer on the side of the exterior cork fabric. For the lining, I still did use the woven fusible interfacing like we did in the video as well. But if you want to get your hands on some cork, I'll include a link in the description box below to my friend Sarah's shop, and that's where I buy mine. This stuff is like super hot in handbag and wallet making, and it's what they call like a vegan leather. It's uh, eco-friendly and sustainable, and it's harvested from a cork tree in Portugal. So it's kind of pricey, but it definitely adds some really great texture, and it comes in dozens of different colors. And that's it, super cute, easy, and functional beginner-friendly project on how to make a roll-up cord keeper. As you can see, this comes in handy for pretty much anybody. If they have gadgets, phones, even sewing cords for their sewing machines and things, this is gonna help keep them all organized and in one place. So I definitely hope that you'll give this project a try. If you do, snap some pictures and post them to the different social media sites. I'd love to see some pictures posted directly to my Facebook page, or you can tag me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and all those places. You can always find me under the name Crafty Gemini. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you'll stick around for the remaining videos of this series, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.